Welcome back to an episode of Molecular Playground. In this one, I make ethyl bromide. For all intents and purposes, ethyl bromide is used as an alkylating synthon to add ethyl groups to larger molecules. This is because the bromide ion can more easily leave compared to hydroxyl groups and chlorides. This quality also makes it highly carcinogenic, so be very careful handling this compound. The materials you need are ethanol, sodium bromide, sulfuric acid, magnesium sulfate, and calcium chloride. In a chilled flask, I pour in 300 milliliters of freezing ethanol. This is approximately 5.14 moles of ethanol. I stir it on high as I add in 250 grams of sodium bromide. This is approximately 2.43 moles of sodium bromide. In the addition funnel, I pour in 140 milliliters of 94% sulfuric acid. This is approximately 2.5 moles of sulfuric acid. In hindsight though, I probably should have used a 70 to 80% concentration. I slowly drip it in while stirring on high. This minimizes localized superheating and bromide oxidation. Eventually, the slush seizes, so I have to resort to manual shaking. After the addition, the solution went from negative 10C to 40C. It's also taken on an orange color resulting from some of the bromide salts oxidizing. I distill everything from the salt. I have only water, ethanol, and ethyl bromide because hydrogen bromide is so acidic it can cleave diethyl ether and ethyl sulfate is very reactive. Eventually, I am left with a bisulfate slush and almost 400 milliliters of distillate. If you recall, I started with 300 milliliters of ethanol, so the growth and solution is a good sign we have some product. I do the same procedure, pouring in another 250 grams of sodium bromide and slowly dripping in 140 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Of course, the mixture seizes, so I have to manually stir the whole apparatus. Still, my solution gets a little too warm, so I have to stop to refreeze. After the addition, my mixture takes on this peachy color. I distill everything again. If you notice, I'm getting a very cloudy distillate. This means I have a very high proportion of ethyl bromide with minor impurities, mainly water, making it murky. Later, however, this weird green tinge appears. It seems to be produced by the charred mush, so I'm going to stop. For my second half, I again add 300 milliliters of ethanol followed by 250 grams of sodium bromide. I reload my funnel with 140 milliliters of sulfuric acid and manually stir for the duration of the addition. It eventually becomes a nice orange color. I distill off everything again and chill down the distillate to negative 10C. I add the final 250 grams of sodium bromide and begin the dripping. Again, I have to manually stir because of the duration of the addition. As I distill, I notice I'm getting a rather clear liquid. This salt cake does not seem to be helping the reaction, and I know it's going to hurt yield. Even after it melts into what is probably a bisulfate slush, I think I got more ethanol this run. After combining my distillates, I get this. I suspect the top layer is mainly water and ethanol and the bottom ethyl bromide with some impurities, but there's only one way to find out. I separate the much larger halide layer from the top alcoholic layer. The bottom crude layer is 1.36 grams per milliliters, a far cry from the 1.46 ethyl bromide is noted to be. However, the top layer actually has a density of 1.138, meaning there's still a decent amount of ethyl bromide in there. I add in a scoop of magnesium sulfate to my crude ethyl bromide and stir it around some. I do the same to the alcoholic solution where I dissolve some of it, further evidence of the higher water content. I freeze both to sequester more water before I pour the alcoholic stuff into my crude ethyl bromide layer. The reason why I mix it is because the density of the alcoholic stuff indicates I have significant ethyl bromide and it would be a waste to dump it. I perform a very soft distillation. I mean it is so soft I can comfortably touch it. My thermometer reads it just under 37C. Despite this, some ethanol will come over by virtue of the azeotrope. Yes, there is an azeotrope. After distilling, this is what I have. Ideally, the distillate should be 97% ethyl bromide and 3% ethanol, representative of the azeotrope. The boiling flash should be almost entirely water saturated by magnesium sulfates and any impurities. I added another scoop of magnesium sulfate and squish it just to sequester any remaining water. I decant it ice cold into another flask and add 40 grams of calcium chloride to absorb any ethanol. After another distillation, I am left with crystal clear ethyl bromide. A quick density test shows 1.47 grams per milliliter. I did have to chill my solution some so I wouldn't evaporate in my hot garage, but I am certain a warmer solution would be exactly 1.46. 
My total yield is 793.3 grams. The ideal mass is 1060, so I got a 75% yield. That is very good considering I use overly concentrated sulfuric acid, and I bet it could be even better with a higher dilution. One fun thing I wanted to try was the burn test. Ethanol is very flammable, as you can see. However, ethyl bromide is actually flame retardant. It can't even manage a flame for more than a few milliseconds. It's strange how substituting a hydroxyl group for a halide radically changes a seemingly ubiquitous property.